Number one, Mr. Fuller, do the white supremacists need to have any conversations with non-white people in order to stop the practice of white supremacy? Can you ask that again? Because I want to make sure I understood that question. Yes, sir. Do the white supremacists need to have any conversations with non-white people in order to stop the practice of white supremacy? Well, the straight answer is, I don't know, but I don't believe so. It's my strong strong belief that in the beginning of white supremacy, using logic, and that's what I have to always base my beliefs on, logic, in the beginning of white supremacy, in which I don't know when that was, I don't think any white person consulted any black person about anything. I think that they, whomever started it, just thought of it and started putting it into practice and didn't consult the black person about anything. They just started practicing white supremacy. So using logic, I don't think any white person in order to replace the system of white supremacy with the system of justice needs to consult black people about how to do that either based on logic in other words if I start something without anybody's permission I know how to stop it without anybody's permission that's the logic just an opinion. Okay. What's your second question, Ray? Yes, sir. Mr. Fuller, how often do you speak to white people about white supremacy, whether initiated or not? Oh, I guess I speak to white people about white supremacy every time I speak to anybody on the air. Uh, if it's not a one-on-one, conversation if like on this podcast on the radio or in an open forum I'm always speaking to the white supremacists because the white supremacists are always aware of what everybody is doing who is classified as non-white if it has any significance at all that will be called to the attention of the white supremacists And it is my opinion, based on what I've seen as evidence, that the white supremacists always want to know what their victims are doing or what their victims are thinking. Just like any gangster organization. Mm -hmm. I often think about the movie Godfather, where the Corleones saying, You know, I think it was Don Carleone who told one of his sons, never tell anybody outside the family what you're thinking. But we're going to send Luca Brasi over to talk to the Tatagas to try to find out what they're thinking. So the white supremacists, to make the same analogy, always want to know what their victims are thinking. And they usually find out in record time. Yes. Why? Because they are in a supreme position to do so. 